What's up guys? Welcome back to Talk and Talk. So today we're going to be talking about love and marriage. I'm still, if I sound a little crazy, I'm recovering. Okay, I'm under the weather. But I still want to give you guys this review on Love and Marriage Huntsville. So, the episode starts off with them meeting at Melody's office. Apparently, this used to be Melody and Martel's office for their old company, which is no longer. So, Melody has the office. Clearly, Martel feels a way that, you know, Melody got the office when the new lease came up. And once he kind of backed out of it, they split she got the office or whatever and i guess it's just a constant reminder to him of you know him no longer having that business and stuff like that especially since martel has seemingly been a little open about how things are not the best for him probably financially and he's just trying to get back on his feet so i'm sure that's like a, a huge kind of slap in the face to him and his ego <clears throat> now I can't stand when they have meetings because, you know, this is supposed to be about uh, the 47 acres and they've been talking about this whole project forever now, for years and like just, you know, close everything down. You know, I do not want to hear about this project anymore. It's over. We beat it. We beat it up so much I, I just can't talk about it anymore so the comeback group is never coming back and please please stop talking about it but I hate when they have meetings because Martel and Melody always argue about their personal problems and they never deal with whatever the meeting is about um, we did get to see how the kids are extremely affected by their relationship and how toxic they are towards each other you know she went to go say hi to the kids she was very aggressive with him and how she talks because she's frustrated by him so you know she talks to him in a certain way and then he throws jabs at her the kids were happy to see her but he kind of left abruptly with the kids so that was like really really freaking bad so um he left with the kids like i said they didn't get to say bye to mel and their oldest daughter was crying and um martel said she was crying because that used to be both of their office and now it's just their moms and it's just a reminder of the split and she said her daughter was crying because they didn't get to say bye to her and it was kind of abrupt and they probably felt you know martel's uh, energy being upset and all sort of stuff but, like y'all kids are really really being affected by this really badly and they just need to get it all the way together. It's a hot behind mess, okay? A, a hot mess. Now, when Martel said that she neglects the kids, I thought that was so wrong to say, especially because um, I really, really doubt that to be even an ounce of truth to that. But y'all are in a meeting. Granted, like those are all your friends, but y'all are in a business meeting right now. Like, it just... It's like who knows what will come out of Martel's mouth whether they're around friends or associates or people who they're literally just trying to do business deals with like why would you say something like that to their mom like you know that she's neglecting them like that is so below the belt and was just disgusting honestly I don't know how Mel is even around Martel like that is so toxic and draining like is ridiculous so now Kimmy Tisha and Mel meet up and it kind of gave me season one vibes when the three of them were like all tight and used to hang out and stuff like that but um they all meet up and Kimmy had asked like well what's our role when you and Martel are arguing and she's like just don't have me in the same room as him anymore like just keep us separate or whatever and honestly that's probably the best thing to do because their relationship is so toxic it's so bad it's bad for other people to be around and have to witness that and, have, and like they just bring a ball of negative energy and now it's all down it's all on other people and they got to carry that and walk with it and it's just mm -mm, i wouldn't want to be around them so they do need to be separated they can't go on trips together they can't do business together they can't be in meetings together like, they just can't do anything together right now. Like, I guess the wound is just going to be 
too fresh for a very very long time for them but let's talk about the issue between Kimmy and uh, Tisha do y'all think it was right for Tisha to text the group uh, do a group text or whatever to remind them about the sponsorship I don't see anything wrong with the text message or a phone call but I guess uh, Kimmy and Tisha were in a bad spot and Kimmy kind of took it as like, you know, I don't know. She took it some type of way. My issue that I have is that it comes off as if Tisha is expecting for all of her friends to give her money for her events. And like they don't have a choice to say no. And if they don't respond or or don't, you know give a check she's gonna be sending you reminder texts and reminder phone calls about it that's what irritates me because we have seen it in the preview for next week's episode um about her basically <laughs> doing uh calling people out who gave checks and who didn't and it's just like that's not that's not right you know if somebody wants to support you, they can support you by attending. They can support you by sharing your event. They can support you by liking your events, put you on Instagram. They can show up. They don't have to write a check. And just because you ask them for a sponsorship or let them know that there is an opportunity for a sponsorship doesn't mean that that person has to do it. Because I really would want to see somebody do this where... Um, she shares that she has an event and um, she brings it to the group to sponsor and somebody declines and says no I'm not gonna be able to sponsor but I'll be able to go and you know I'll bring so-and-so with me somebody else who can benefit from the event and I want to see how she treats them because for some reason I feel like Kimmy's annoyed with the money grab part of it I think Kimmy's annoyed with the money grab part of it I think that's why she's annoyed that she even got a reminder text about a check. And she's like, I've always wrote a check for this, 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 and that. You know what I mean? Like, why do you need to remind me to send you a check? You know, I think it doesn't come, it's coming off, you know, like a money grab pretty much or whatever. Like, she doesn't want to be, you know, hounded for a check. And I think in the next episode, we're going to see a little bit more of that. Because that's what's bothering me about it. It's like, those ladies don't owe you a check. You know, if they responded and said, um, thank you for letting me know. I will be at your event or whatever. Like, that. that's it. You know what I mean? Like, people are not required to sponsor events. They're not required to donate. They're not. They're not. So, I'm kind of getting that vibe. I don't think there was any issue with sending a group text, but I just get the vibe that, you know, she was she was out there looking for checks, you know? That's it. Um, now, let's talk about Mel and Martel meeting up now. Um, Martel and his friend is talking about the builder's license, and Martel was like, oh, I'm focused. I'm just not focused on studying for the test. And it's like, Martel, what do you think he's talking about? He's telling you to focus, to study for your builder's license test so you can have your license. Yeah, your friend is trying to help you out here, bro. And you so focused on your ex-wife and what she's doing in drama that you missing the bag. Like, you you missing the opportunity to upgrade yourself, you know, because you so focused on the BS. So, Martel's going to be his own, um, his own issue. You know, he's going to prevent himself from leveling up. You know, and he don't even realize that he's so down deep into the drama, into that hatred and the negativity. I don't know if he's going to be able to swim back up for air. I don't. So uh, Melanie goes and meets him because he, I guess, um, popped up on her date, you know, and ruined things. And she's like, you know, you were in a, a business meeting and you left that to go and bum rush my date. And then probably went back to the meeting and gave them 15 minutes and then left. Like, you are, like, losing out on opportunities and you're concerned about your business reputation. And she's absolutely right. You know what I mean? It's like, people want to see you have, have income, Martel. They want to see you be in this industry and building homes and, and the real estate and all sorts of stuff. But you are hindering yourself by being so focused on this drama between you and Mel. 
If she's on a date and you're jealous, welcome to real life. That doesn't mean you drop everything you're doing and you go figure out where she at and just pop up like that's your girl or something. That's not your girl. Go ahead and finish that business meeting. Be an adult. There's plenty of times people have to go to work where they're upset and then, or they're having issues with their partner or whatever they're going issues with them or whatever's going on and they had to put on that fake smile and still show up to work or go do their presentation or whatever and and show up 100% at work. So, and then you you have to show up 100% for yourself because you are an entrepreneur. So it's like, what are you doing? What are what are you doing? What are you doing? That's like me getting up and um, leaving my client that I'm lashing because I'm having a, another issue. And I'm like, you know what? I can't finish your set right now. I got to go. What? I would never do that. So, like, Martel, you got to do better. You got to do so much better. And you got to let Mel go. You know, one minute you don't want to admit that you want her to be your wife again. And the next minute... You know, you act like you want her. Like, actions speak louder than words. You want that lady back. It's normal because you stepped out. You didn't want the marriage to end. You just wanted to play on the side as well. That's normal. Ain't nobody going to shame you for that. You know, but you out here acting crazy. It's like, it's hard for anybody to, be, to have sympathy for you and want you to get on your feet if this is how you act. You know, like, get your, get your life together. Get your life together. You should no way be calling the mother of your kids neglectful if she is not neglectful. You know, you shouldn't be popping up on her dates. You know, you shouldn't be messing up business opportunities and ruining your business reputation in your town with colleagues. You just shouldn't. You got to grow up, man. Grow up. Comment what you think down below. And I will see you guys in the next episode.